Welcome back to Bain Camera TV. I'm your host, Spencer Short. In today's video, we're gonna be having a look at five cameras for photography and filmmaking students. So these cameras will be entry-level professional models that are best suited for folks that want a little bit more power for their dollar. Uh, you might have a little bit bigger of a budget than our previous video where we focused on budget-friendly entry-level models. Today, we're looking at uh, something that's worth a little bit more, but will definitely get you better performance. To jump right in, we're gonna be keeping things roughly in the $2,000 to $2,500 range. And just like the previous video, these cameras are in no particular order. We're just talking about them because they are the most interesting models from particular brands in our given price point. Let's dive right into it. The first camera we're gonna take a look at today is the Nikon Z5. This is their entry-level full-frame camera and is definitely best suited for studio portrait photography uh, as it isn't the fastest model that they make, nor is it very well video-oriented. Uh, but if you're someone who does street photography, portrait sessions, essentially something with not a ton of movement and the ability to set your shots up, the Z5 is gonna be fantastic for that. The Z5 features a 24 megapixel full-frame sensor, can record 4K video, uh, albeit with a bit of a crop and only up to 30 frames per second. It is one of the cheapest full-frame cameras that you can get today, uh, and it features Nikon's Z mount, so it will be fully featured with lenses in the coming years. Uh, they will continue to support this lens mount all throughout the 2020s. Doesn't have the crazy fastest burst speeds in the world, but it is definitely a serviceable model for any folks looking to jump into Nikon. Next up, from the other big brand, Canon, we've got the Canon R7. We would have liked to have a comparable Canon full-frame camera. Uh, however, given the pricing and the performance of the EOS RP, we didn't think it was really worth investing in these days, uh, particularly because we are expecting Canon to put out a new budget-friendly full-frame camera. Uh, so this list may be updated sometime in the future. But for now, we've got their top-of-the-line APS-C camera in the Canon R7. This thing is awesome, not only for photos, but also for video. This is gonna be the most fully featured APS-C camera you can get as of right now. We have amazing features like a 32.5 or basically 33 megapixel APS-C sensor, Canon's fastest and most accurate autofocus algorithms, as well as some awesome 4K video recording options, all the way up to 60 frames a second with 10-bit recording, uh, 422, all that good stuff. The R7 is a fantastic hybrid option. It'll also be fantastic for wildlife and sports shooters as it has wicked fast burst rates uh, with fantastic continuous autofocus. For portraits, it is a great choice, although you will have to keep in mind that there is that crop factor with full frame lenses. So the R7, much like the Z5, is still waiting on new lenses to be released that are designated for it. But the RF lens mount is one that Canon is likely going to support for years to come and would be a fantastic investment choice if you're wanting to get a high performance model from Canon. Next up is unfortunately a camera that I don't have in my hands. Uh, due to supply chain issues, we unfortunately don't have an XS10 to show you in today's video, uh, but we are expecting more models to come into the store soon. Availability on this model is definitely not a problem. I just unfortunately couldn't get my hands on one to film with today. So you'll have to uh, imagine, if you will, what the XS10 might look like in my hands. The XS10 is a fantastic hybrid option as it is pretty powerful for video as well as it is for photo. Uh, it has the same sensor as well as image processor as the flagship X-T4 from Fuji. And Fuji's sensors are constructed a little bit differently from most other manufacturers' image sensors, so they'll render green colors a lot more vibrantly than some of the competition may. So if you are a landscape photographer in particular, you'll definitely notice poppier colors off of that Fuji body. The X-S10 is a fantastic jumping on point for any prospective Fuji shooters that want to take advantage of their fantastic film simulations, their array of beautiful lenses, uh, or just wanted to buy into one of the most die-hard ecosystems out there. Fans for Fuji are unlike any camera fans out there. The X-S10 is also compact enough to be tucked away into small corners to get interesting shots, just like the G100 we mentioned last week. The X-S10 is gonna be an awesome choice for photo and video shooters alike. 
The next pick on our list is definitely more video oriented than some of the others we've talked about, uh, but this one is the Panasonic S5. By far the best image that you can get out of a video camera for the money. Uh, the S5 packs a ton of awesome video features that filmmaking students will definitely appreciate. The S5 is by no means a photography slouch. It does feature a 24 megapixel full frame sensor, albeit Panasonic is known for that really shifty autofocus. Uh, so if you're someone who shoots high intensity sports or wildlife, you may want to look somewhere else. But if you do slower types of photography like portraits or landscape, you can get some fantastic shots out of something like this. Now for video is where the S5 really, really shines. You can record open gate 6K, 3x2, 10-bit, 422 footage, slow motion options up to 180 frames a second in 1080p, some of the best in-body image stabilization available on any camera right now, and plenty of video monitoring and assist features that will make your next shoot as easy as it can be. The S5 has a flip out touch screen that'll help you compose those vlogging type shots or anything high or low angle. Uh, and it does feature the L mount which is an interesting choice at this juncture, uh, given that it is being produced by uh, Panasonic, Sigma, Leica, and DJI at this point. So there are lots of lenses available for the L mount. However, they are typically about 30% more expensive than their Sony counterparts. Um, that's just something to keep in mind if you're a prospective L mount shooter. For media on all of these cameras thus far, we will have dual SD card slots, so you can have not only redundant recording, but you can continue recording even if your first card fills up, which is always really nice, particularly for those longer days of shooting. All that to be said, the S5 is gonna be a really good choice for anybody wanting to do video on a medium-sized budget. And finally, we've got the Sony a7C. This is the most compact full-frame camera that is currently available. The a7C features a 24 megapixel full-frame sensor, a Sony E-mount, uh, and a bunch of other creature comfort features that a lot of pro photographers will definitely enjoy. This guy can do up to 10 frames a second, continuous burst shooting in RAW with continuous autofocus, shoots 4K video at up to 30 frames a second. It is the only camera on our list, unfortunately, to feature a single SD card slot, uh, but if you get a large enough card, you shouldn't have to worry about running out of space on this guy. It features a flip touch screen that allows for, again, high angle, low angle shooting and that vlogging possibility. Now the main unfortunate downside to the Sony a7C are going to be in its ergonomics. For folks like myself with larger hands, uh, the tiny little grip just leaves a ton to be desired. I can't ever find a comfortable position to have my hands in with this camera, but your mileage may vary. Uh, not everybody has the big baseball mitts that I do, so you might find this tiny little camera to be exactly what you need. Its compact size definitely makes the a7C a fantastic choice for travel photographers or street shooters alike that want something small, nondescript, and that won't necessarily get you kicked out of a concert. Sony's autofocus is still one of the best systems that you can adopt, uh, particularly in video. I find their autofocus to be a little bit better than Canon's, just a little bit more consistent. Uh, and for photography, much like the Z5, this would make a fantastic portrait or studio camera that you just kind of set up on a tripod and leave it there. Uh, and for video shooters, this would make a fantastic gimbal or drone camera as its tiny size and relatively balanced center of gravity make it really easy to mount and rig up into different shooting rigs. So that about does it for cameras that fit into that under $2,500 price point that we were talking about earlier. Uh, there is one last camera that I did want to mention. If you have a bit of a larger budget uh, and wanted to swing for something that's super high quality, the Fuji X-T4 is just above our $2,500 cutoff uh, and features a lot of the same stuff that the R7 and XS10 do, kind of combined into one amazing hybrid body. The one spot where the X-T4 does leave a little bit to be desired is going to be in the autofocus. Unfortunately, they still have yet to adopt the consistency of Canon and Sony systems, but is leaps and bounds better than Panasonic's contrast-based system. So for hybrid shooters that are looking for an amazing body, the X-T4 is definitely one you might want to consider. That about does it for me today. Thank you so much for joining us in this student camera shootout. We hope that you enjoyed the video. If you did, go ahead and leave it a like below uh, and consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any future videos. 
follow us on all of our socials at McBain Camera, and be sure to visit us in stores for your back to school photography shopping needs. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time.